you know, uh, in Islam, Allah is, is the God. And some sort of unimaginable thing that made us and this universe and everything around us. Let's see what God says. You're talking about your God. Yes. If I was talking to a Muslim, the answer would be different. Way of Life SQ. Keeping it a hundred. Warning. This video contains two of the things that you absolutely love to see in a YouTube video. Ugly lighting and horrible audio. I hope you enjoy and may Allah bless you all. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so grateful, thankful and oh boy. Oh boy. That you decide to spend some of your time here with me today. It's not every day, bro, that you go from doing songs like this. Every day, bro, with the Disney Channel flow. Hey, what a joke. That's Jake Paul, not Logan Paul. Yeah, you banana. What are you, yeah? I know for a fact that after watching this video, you're going to want to share it with Logan Paul because this will be beneficial for him and many others who are confused within their own religion. So Logan Paul on this very popular podcast recently brought a Christian pastor, speaker perhaps, uh, onto a show in which they discussed religion. And uh, here's some clips from that show and we're gonna do a little analysis on what he said. When I tell you like religion in general and, and faith, sometimes I, I the reason, cause I'm not, like I said, I'm not overly religious. I do believe in a creator. Mm. I don't know what his role is in our day-to-day -day lives. I, 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 I think there's some sort of unimaginable thing that made us and this universe and everything around us. But like I said, I don't know if he's as active as, uh, faith would tell you mashallah that's amazing the fact that you're not an atheist and you believe in something and a creator being that you're so rich and famous and you have everything that a person could ever want yet you still believe that there is a creator that's incredible within itself and unimaginable is the correct word because allah is ahead he is one and alone and one and only he is unique he is unimaginable there's nothing like him whatsoever so of course how can you imagine this creator he is unimaginable and allah is that unimaginable that you're thinking of because i'm i'm confused i i don't truly understand there's too many stories being told there's too many people saying different things mm. uh religion faith whatever you want to call it has has led to the deaths of too many people has led to the the trauma of too many children mm. and I, I i've just been not shut off to the idea but turned off momentarily yeah. you know what you're right in the name of religion a lot of evil and bad things have happened which would put any god-fearing person a person who believes that there is a creator and he doesn't want you to be doing that it would put anyone off but i would argue that religion is man-made the name and the word itself has social construct that is man-made but islam is not a religion and islam is not man-made because the word religion doesn't really even exist in islam the word is deen which means your way of life the way you carry yourself and people would be surprised that if you actually look into islam the rules the the, the laws, the teachings, everything aligns with things that you already believe innately that after learning them, you might be like, hang on a second. I feel like I've been a Muslim this entire time because it aligns with your own thinking. And that's why I was excited to have, I'm excited, I yeah. am excited to have you on the podcast. Yeah. Because, um, I, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure I can fully wrap my head around so many people telling me different things about their God. Logan, I totally understand what you're saying, but here's the clarification. There's only one God and every religion is speaking about that same God. However, people throughout time have lost their own text. Their texts were not preserved. So people have innovated into their own religions, taking things that didn't make sense to them out and adding things that they wanted to add within the religions that satisfied their beliefs, their values, their heart, their desires, and they innovated into their own religions. Hence, the messages sound all over the place and it sounds like everyone has different gods, but the message is the same. And here's a simple message that there's only one God and this creator is unique and unimaginable. And he is the one, he not as in a male or a man, but we say he out of uh, a term of respect instead of saying it deserves your obedience because he has made you. And if you want true satisfaction, 
true happiness in your, your life, in your world, then the only way that that happiness can take place is by submitting your will to this creator. That is the message that every religion brought. Each religion brought their own jurisprudence, meaning their own rules and regulations for that time, for that people, but the message was always the same at heart. That there's only one God who is deserving and worthy of all worship and you're going to meet this creator one day on the day of judgment that is appointed and the only way for you to truly find yourself and find happiness within yourself is by submitting to this creator. I like the idea of being a good person and, and following everything that you said. I just, I don't know if I could put a label on it uh, that, that would define me in a certain way. You know what, Logan, that's an excellent point about being a good person. Let me ask you a question. Who defines what's good? What is good? Because once upon a time, Logan, in a very dark part of our history, uh, the more Jews you killed, the better of a person you were because you were helping your country, helping your religion, helping your leader. And that was something very, very noble to do. Once upon a time, right, if you, if you supported uh, you know, going and having slaves. You were a good person. And if you were someone who cleansed the world of people who weren't white, you were labeled as a good person, a good Christian, a good God-fearing person because this land belongs to the clean people. And once upon a time, you know, Native Americans were looked at as savages. And the more you killed them and eradicated them and took the land that that was yours, that was a good thing for you to do. So I would argue the only being that has the right to tell us uh, what's good from bad is not a human being who can change the laws according to society and times, but rather the being, Allah, the unique one, the one and only, the unimaginable, that being has the right to tell us what's right from wrong because not only has he created us, but he needs to give us a standard, a rubric to judge our lives so that we can judge ourselves. And for that, we need a text that goes unchanged from the beginning of its revelation something that can be documented, looked up to see when it was revealed and its authenticity can be proven. You need a document that provides you a rubric so that you can judge yourself before the one who made you judges you according to that rubric that he sent down upon you. I've, I've always been sort of, uh, I don't know, just rubbed the wrong way. Like when I was in PSR as a kid, mm. seven years old, I was eight years old. I was like, mom, this feels weird. Like the things that, like they're telling me and preaching to me, it's, I, I'm not so, I'm not here for the, the, the shoving of faith down the throats of, yeah. of, of people who just don't know, don't, don't know better. You see, Logan, you're proving one thing right now that believing in a creator is innate. It makes sense to you. Now, you might not know who this creator is or what religion is the correct one or if there is even a religion that is correct, but clearly you're talking about some negative experience that you've had with religion, some sort of spiritual trauma and a negative condition that you have towards religion. Hence, your feelings are being projected towards religion overall. But I would argue that anything that doesn't sit well with you innately, with your fitra, something that God has put within you, will be rejected. And when the church is telling you something that doesn't make sense to your soul, it is naturally rejecting it because it doesn't align with your fitra. And that's essentially what's happened to you. It's given you some spiritual indigestion. You don't think so? Mm -mm. Where do you get good from? I think I think uh, the universally accepted definition of good is like you know right and wrong. You know when something's right and something's morality, wrong. general morality. Yes, yes, Logan, there is a need for an objective truth. There are objective right and wrongs and for that we need a creator who's made us to set those parameters because we've already discussed we cannot decide what's right or wrong or what's good or bad because we have the ability to change that according with society as society moves along. So there is a need for a creator to set those standards and give us a rubric that never changes from now until the end of time, no matter what century we're in. There's certain truths that are right and certain things that are wrong objectively irrespective of what time we're in. And for that, we need a, a, a scripture, a, a, 
a, a set of rules, rubrics, a revelation from the creator that goes untouched, untampered with, can be proven. Its authenticity can be challenged and looked for, and it has to stand the test of time. And that's what we need. We need a revelation like that to satisfy what you're saying about objective and universal truths and right and wrong. Here, here, I believe, here we believe in different standards. I believe inherently humans know what is right. Or maybe not know what is wrong. I believe there is a right. I believe there is a wrong. I believe there is a bad. I believe there is a good. And it's not too hard to tell the difference. You see, right and wrong is subjective to each person and their culture. But what Logan, you're suggesting is that there should be a definitive, an objective right and wrong. And that's the beauty of Islam. That's the beauty and the purity of this text that whatever this is suggesting in the text, which can be backed up historically and challenged within itself, that's what you're looking for. And Islam provides this answer of a definitive right and wrong that will stay till the end of time. Let's see what God says. You're talking about your God. Yes. If I was talking to a Muslim, the answer would be different. So you got to figure out. <laughs> it, it, yeah. But it's worth looking. You got to go, okay. Yeah, you got to investigate. Like, I studied, I studied that. Yo, I, went, but, I went to study some of those. But I, this is where I get confused. Like, like who's right and who's wrong? Are, are, are Muslims wrong because they're Muslim? Are Christians wrong because they're Christian? And what are the consequences of being right and wrong? Or are we all just people on an earth that was created by some guy and now we're here and it's up to us to discern our, what our future looks like? You no, know, Carl did mention a good point. This, this is worth asking these questions. And Logan, this is my message to you, man. I think you're asking some great questions right now. And I wanna just say, like, let's not put a label. Like you said, you don't know, you don't wanna put labels. Labels mess things up for you. Let's not put a label on this religion. Let's call it religion X. Okay, and let's make up a religion right now. You and me right now, let's make up this religion. Okay, let's call it religion X, all right? Here is the correct religion, simple. That there is a creator and you acknowledge that. You acknowledge that there is a divine power, a main creator who has made us, who's absolutely unique and unimaginable, who is not, you know, bound by space and time and other restraints that we might have or creation might have. This is a unique creator. And our responsibility is to believe in him alone. Don't associate a partner with him. Don't associate an idol with him. Don't say he has a son. He has a daughter. He has a cousin. He has a cha-cha. Nothing. All right. This creator is all by himself and he has made us. And by us submitting and following the directions that he is going to send us, because he's not just gonna let us roam around alone and like, hey guys, just figure it out. That sounds like he's pranking us and he's not. He would send us messengers, good quality people of highest character and regard to deliver a message, people that, they, that God handpicked himself to select to teach us and tell us who is God and so that we can understand and get to know him, okay? The correct religion, Logan, is us believing in God one and alone. No partners, no associations with him whatsoever. And by believing in him and submitting our wills to him, understanding that the only way for us to find true happiness is by getting to know who this creator is. And how would we do that? By giving us revelation that is untouched, unmarked, untampered with, so that we could connect with him directly. We don't need, you know, establishments to say, hey, pay to us or pray to, uh, to us or through us to get to God directly. God wants to establish a direct link with him alone, okay? That is the correct religion. Simple as that. The religion that when you submit your will to him, you achieve peace and contentment, that is the correct religion. No one can tamper with it, and that sounds pretty pure. Now here's the thing, Logan, that religion does exist, and that religion is called Islam. And it requires you to speak to people who know about Islam. Like you said some things about Islam that really didn't make sense, and it's awesome that you're asking these questions, but you gotta come to the correct conclusions. You want people like Carl Lentz on your podcast, mashallah, but let's get some other Muslim people, some interesting Muslim people, and I'm not just gonna shout out myself, you could get people like Muhammad Hijab and others out there who would be awesome people to have a conversation with on your podcast. These are interesting and knowledge-filled people who could give you a run for your money. But most importantly, answer these questions that you have because you're a good person who has questions that are going unanswered. You had some traumatic experience with Christianity and the church while you were growing up. But I promise you, if you ask a Muslim, not so that you convert, 
but so that you're a little more educated and perhaps this helps you to get on that trajectory to find this creator that you always, your whole life, have been looking for. So I urge you, Logan, to speak to some Muslims